Advent journey is rapidly drawing to a close. Christmas is near. Our period of hopeful waiting will soon end as we celebrate Jesus, the light of the world, entering human history in the small town of Bethlehem. Our readings today are about faith and hope. In the first reading, the prophet Micah gives hope to the Jewish people who are in, ex who are in exile in Babylon. He tells them that a future ruler will come forth from Bethlehem. This ruler will stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord in the majestic name of the Lord his God. Of this future ruler, Micah says, his greatness shall reach the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. He will not just establish peace, he will be peace itself. In the second reading, the author of the letter to the Hebrews tells us that when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Behold, I come to do your will, O God. If we model our lives after Christ, we realize that we are not in this world to simply offer prayer and sacrifice to God, not here to simply repent for sin. We are here for more than that. We are here to actively do the will of God, to take God's love into the world. In the gospel, we hear Mary's visit to her cousin Elizabeth, who was with child, carrying John the Baptist in her womb. In the gospel for December 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we heard how the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her that she would conceive a child in her womb and bear a son who would be called Jesus. Mary was very puzzled by the angel's message, but she said yes to God. She said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Mary accepts and says yes to God's plan, to the will of God. Mary could have said, I'm too young, or I'm too busy, or isn't there someone else that's better prepared to do this? Mary, for an instant, held mankind's salvation in her grasp. She was put on the spot. What would she say? What would she do? Mary's faith prepared her and enabled her to say yes when God called her. The Gospel reading for today tells us of one aspect of Mary's reaction to the message of the angel Gabriel. She set out to visit her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country. This couldn't have been an easy journey, after all Mary was with child, but she wanted to offer her help and her presence to Elizabeth. Mary's decision to extend help to her cousin was much like the reaction of so many people to the terrible event in Newtown a year ago, about a week ago, this past Friday. So many people have offered so many things to the families affected and to the people of the town of Newtown. They've offered their prayers and their words of consolation. They've offered their presents. They've offered teddy bears, flowers, apple pies, and school supplies. Sometimes it seems as though there are just too many physical things being offered. But these gifts are tangible expressions of love, of caring, of sorrow, and of desire to be joined in union with the people of Newtown. Like the symbols, like the signs used in our church's sacraments, these gifts are visible signs of invisible grace, of love and caring for the families of Newtown. They are signs of our love, and through us, God's love. The letter to the Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 1, tells us that Faith is the realization of what is hoped for, and evidence of things not seen. Faith enables us to believe in what is to come, and helps us to bring that future reality to life. Faith tells us that what is visible comes from the invisible, that there is more to reality than just what we can see and touch. Faith tells us that God is real. It's from our faith that we draw our hope our belief that those who died at Samuel's school, while separated from us now in this world, will continue in life everlasting with God in heaven. Mary, in saying yes to God's plan, became the new Ark of the Covenant, 
she carried God within her. Mary's faith is an example to us, her yes a model to us. But we are all temples of the Holy Spirit. We all carry God within us. We strengthen this bond each time we receive God in Holy Communion. As we draw to a close this Advent season, we can look for those times when we can say yes to God's will, to God's plan. Those times when we can bring love to the world, caring to the world. Those times when we can light a candle against darkness and despair. Our world needs love and joy in it. It needs hope. At times we all need help and encouragement. Our faith gives us a reason for our existence on this earth. To know, love, and serve God. As St. Francis of Assisi said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. As Advent closes and on into the new year, there will be new tasks, new problems, new occasions to put our faith into action, to live out in our lives what we profess to our faith. With Mary as our example, will we say yes, how will we say yes to God in the days of